Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you are all safe and well during these trying times. I am the Curious Owlbear, and I'm continuing the series where I give you ideas for random encounters that don't suck. Today we have a request from you wonderful folks for some undead encounters. Let's see what the adventurers will run into. The party is off in the wilderness once again on their way to the next adventure. They wander past a small tower, perhaps 30 feet tall, which is constructed of materials that are not natural in this environment. The tower is missing several pieces of its outer walls, which lay strewn about the area. As the group passes, they notice a greenish light emanating from within the second floor of the small tower. The entrance is obvious and unlocked, welcoming the party inside. If they enter, a vision of a beautiful female elf draped in arcane robes appears on the stairwell, slowly descending toward the party. She offers the party a story about an arcane ritual that went awry, damaging much of the tower and costing her and her apprentices their lives. The elf goes on to ask the group to restore a lost magical item that was part of the ritual and very important to her patron deity. If the group is able to complete her request, she will exchange a bit of magical or historical knowledge that may help the party in the future. One day, while the group is passing through a hilled landscape, they encounter a plantation, obviously abandoned. Several of the shutters hang casually from their place over the windows, the crops seem overgrown, and no animals appear to be kept in the barn. If the group wanders inside the big house, they will run into a small grouping of undead servants. They've been here for a very long time, and have a story to tell about their demise, but they continue their life of servitude into undead life. They offer to serve the party as if they were the master of the households for as long as the party wishes to stay, though there won't be much food for living guests. The group, while investigating the big house, come upon another interesting find. Buried under a large stack of papers, texts, and maps, they locate an amulet adorned with rubies and inlaid with intricate etchings. It depicts a small skull and gives off a magical aura with such spells as detect magic. If the group identifies the magic or attunes to the item, they'll discover that this is an amulet of speak with dead. This item will enable the party to communicate with many undead creatures in the future, and it may come in extremely useful. The group travels near or across a large body of water during the next leg of their journey. Any player who spent some time watching the surface will slowly begin to see faces peeking at them. They look like humans or elves or dwarves, though they are extremely waterlogged and seem to have partially decayed. The players will need to decide how best to approach these undead creatures, but if they thoroughly investigate, they will find that these are drowned sailors whose violent ends have unfortunately trapped them in undeath. It's up to you as the DM to decide whether these creatures will be extremely hostile or whether they'll search for assistance in passing on to the next life. Continuing their journey near the large body of water, the group eventually comes across another intriguing sight. Near midnight, some of the players are resting, while others keep watch over the surrounding area. Most ships know not to travel at night, as lantern light does not make for easy sailing. However, the players on watch will notice a ship approaching, a large three-masted vessel. It cruises with unnatural speed making a course to pass the party within half an hour. As it comes closer and into full view, the players realize that the sails are torn, areas are destroyed from years of heavy combat, and there appears to be absolutely no crew members on board. If the players approach the ship in an attempt to board it, the ship makes no change to its course. A thorough investigation of the ship and its hull reveals only one interesting piece of treasure. Emblazoned on the helm of the ship is a large skulled face, each of its eyes a valuable jewel. As the players watch the helm, they see it slowly turning as if there were still a crew member operating the wheel. If 
the players spend more than an hour aboard the vessel, they slowly begin to hear whispers in their minds, and very strong spells may reveal that the two gems on the helm of the ship are a result of the ninth level imprisonment spell. It seems that the ship's captain and first mate were the targets of the spell, trapped forever aboard their ghost ship. The group passes over another large landscape en route to the next adventure. They begin to have brief sightings of undead cows, chickens, and other small creatures that are native to the area. Soon after, they begin to spot humanoid creatures ambling around aimlessly. Some of these creatures may be hostile to the group, and after battling their way through a seemingly endless population of undead, the party arrives at a long tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, the group encounters a shrine with layered magics. It seems that the shrine was constructed with the intention of imbuing the land with unnatural prosperity, but it has somehow been corrupted. The group may be able to infer the correct reasoning for the undead in the area. Every creature who passes away in the region will be resurrected as undead. This encounter can be paired with a great creature to give higher level characters more incentive to avoid dying, as these characters often have access to resurrection spells. While investigating an ancient ruin or study, the party encounters a small group of wraiths. The wraiths seem to take notice of the party immediately, but do not move to attack. Instead, one calls out in an ancient dialect, its voice wispy and threatening. You can decide what language the creature uses, but if the group is able to understand the language, they will realize that the creature is introducing itself. It goes on to state that it has been a long time since they had visitors, attempting to gather why the party has entered their place of rest. They will have a small task for the group. In my game, this was transporting some of their valuable items into a large safe in the upper floor of a tower. The group can accomplish the task, and the wraiths can offer some smaller treasures as compensation. In my game, these wraith were once civilian scholars who lived in a flying city. When the spell plague hit, all magic ceased to function, and the city plummeted to the land below. The city's best mages attempted to transport the city to the Astral Sea to avoid its demise, but were unable to complete the ritual in time. This violent death, as well as the city's positioning between two planes of existence, caused many of the city's residents to move into undeath. I highly recommend giving the undead scholar wraiths some information or spell scrolls that will help your party in the future. As the group passes near a graveyard, they spot some dancing flames reflecting off of some of the gravestones. If the group investigates, they may be attacked by a small skull which hovers around while giving off constant flames. The Flame Skull is one of my favorite lower level undead creatures, as the combination of its fly speed, spellcasting options, and deadly rays of fire can make this creature a very difficult opponent. If you combine the Flame Skull with a few skeletons or other undead creatures, then your party will be in for a deadly fight. While the group is inside of a barrow or a maze, they will encounter another undead threat. A large skeletal beast with long horns atop its skull wields a battle axe as it charges towards the party. The Minotaur skeleton is another of my favorite lower level creatures as its gore ability, resistances, and relatively high HP can make it a formidable foe. If you use multiple Minotaur skeletons at the same time, your party may quickly find themselves cornered in an evil place. I prefer combining the Minotaur Skeleton with another undead creature, such as the Flame Skull, and I highly recommend using them in confined spaces, where your group will have difficulty keeping their distance. Finally, the group enters the burial chamber of a long-dead human wizard king. The tomb is long and the journey arduous, but the group arrives at the final resting place of the wizard king. There, they find a tall skeleton, complete with three skulls. Instantly, the creature begins launching spell after spell at the party as they attempt to ready themselves. The Skull Lord is an extremely powerful foe, with such spells as Finger of Death. They have a wide range of immunities and resistances, 
which make melee attacks difficult or less potent. Additionally, each of their three skulls is attuned to one of their powers, and removing the associated skull will disable the ability. All in all, these are extremely formidable foes that can quickly destroy a party of unsuspecting adventurers. Use them with caution. And that brings us to the end of today's random encounters. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to smash that subscribe button. I've saved up a few requests already, but I always love to read your suggestions for future videos. Until next time, be well, be excellent to one another, and stay curious, adventurers. <laughs>